Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we have the pleasure to host uh, Chao Li from Riken AIP. And uh, Chao is a research scientist at, at Riken, and he has extensively worked on sensor network structure search. That's the topic that we are going to hear about today. And uh, thanks for accepting our invitation, Chao, and the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks, thank you very, very much. Thanks, thanks, thanks for the introduction. Yes, my name is Chao Li. I'm a research scientist at the Rika Institute. Uh, in this presentation, I will talk, talk, talk about the tensor network structure search, uh, search. I usually call it TNSS for convenience. After the presentation, you will know what the TNSS is, why it is so important, and how to solve it efficiently with uh, the descript optimization. Okay, okay, yeah. So I, I think all of you will agree that the tensor network has, has been an efficient framework for representing complex systems. The tensor net network can decompose the system into simpler and interconnected parts, making it e e easier to analyze and learn from. And so far, the tensor networks have been widely used in the field of not only machine learning, but also science and mathematics. And the wide range of applications highlights the impressive e expressive power of the tensor networks. And we know that uh, such a power actually comes from the diversity of their structures. Uh, it, it is because the tensor networks can be constructed in different ways to model the correlation for different systems. But uh, uh, in the material, uh, in the scenario of the machine learning, such a correlation is typically unknown. So when we try to apply the, the test networks to our own task in machine learning, we have to be faced the following two no notorious questions. The first question is, what is the most suitable tensor network model for our task? And how can we efficiently select the structure related parameters? Th these two qu questions serve as the driving force behind the study of my research. So in this presentation, I will provide a concise overview of our, our approach to addressing these two questions. And here I will mainly fo focus on the second par part. I will accomplish this part by introducing three algorithms re re that, that, that has been studied in my research. And after that, if, if we still have time, I will uh, talk about uh, theory some theoretical re uh, re results involved in TNSS. So let's start with the first question, what a TNSS is. So first of all, let's ha have a brief overview of the tensor networks. So in the tensor network, its fun fundamental building block is called a tensor, which de defined as a multi-dimensional array of numbers. So in this context, ve vectors can be seen as tensors of order one because, because there's only one index to locate their entries. And the matrix as tensors of order two because there are two indexes correspond to the rows and the columns. And then to establish the interconnection, the interaction between the ten, different ten, ten tensors, we need to de define our operation, which is called contraction. And the contraction can be understood as a tensor-tensor multiplication. So based on the two concepts, the tensor network can be represented by an edge-labeled graph where the vertexes correspond to tensors and each connected edge in indicates a contraction between the two linked vertexes. So we can say that the, the, the tensor network can be used to represent a sequence of com complex multiplication of many tensors. Okay, so in the task of TNSS, I can I concern three types three types of structure re related parameters. They are the tensor net network ranks, vertex permutation, and the tensor network topology. So to understand these, let's see one example. Suppose we have a tensor ten, tensor of order all the four. It means that we have four mode indexes x, y, z, and t. 
And then we'd like to represent it with a tensor ring network. So in this uh, example, the tensor network, the TN ranks correspond to the edge labels, which can be understood as a natural extension of the classic mat classic ma matrix ranks. And it also because the bound dimension in physics and the vertex permutation correspond to the vertex labels, which re reflects how to map the four mode indexes X, Y, Z, and T onto the vertexes of the graph. And the different correlate, the different mappings core, uh, implies the different correlation information among the different mode in indexes. As for the tensor network topology, which just refers to the graph, which is used to model the tensor network. So the task of TNSS just refers to the process of exploring the optimal combination of those structures to represent the complex system using a tensor network. And the whole problem can be specified into three subproblems according to the different types of the parameters. They can be the rank section RS, permutation search PS, and topology search TS. And the goal of TSS in my study is to try to de develop algorithms which can reduce the computational cost in the search process. We focus on the computational co cost because solving TNSS is quite challenging. On the theoretical side, side TNSS can be proved to be unpretty difficult. Code. For for example, for the simplest case, that 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 is to learn the ranks for the Tucker decomposition, it has been proven to be unpretty hard. And on the practical side, the TNSS suffers from the so-called combinatorial exponent problem. It means that the popular used exhaustive search will not be a valuable option because the number of the TN structure candidates would grow exponentially or even faster with increasing the tensor orders. So to address this challenge. Uh, my idea is to solve team access as a dis discrete op optimization problem. We form formulate the problem accordingly as shown in the slide, where the orbital function consists of, of two, two, two parts. It's a linear combination of the model complexity and the model expressibility. And the tensor network structure is modeled with a simple graph G and its edge labeling function R. And for the three subproblems, the rank section, topology search, and the permutation search, they correspond to restricting the fitable set G and FG into different forms. And let's see one example to know more, more about how the tensor network structures are represented. Here, suppose we have a tensor ring network of order six. Then its structure, including the ranks and is a, such a circle topology, can be naturally described by the adjacency matrix. On this matrix, we can set the, the value of the entries to be zero or not zero to delete or add an edge in the tensor network. And we can also give the, give the entries the different values to change the ranks. And if we put the mode dimension onto the diagonal of the adjacency matrix, we can see that this augmented adjacency matrix contains all the information of the tensor network structure. As for the vertex permutations, suppose that we'd like to switch the position of the two vertexes G1 and G5. In this case, it just corresponds to permuting the corresponding rows and columns of the adjacent matrix using the permutation matrix P. Yeah, so now you know what the TNSS is. So ne next, let's see how to solve TNSS efficiently. Um, in my presentation, I, I will focus on the technique of discrete optimization. 
um, at, at the end of this section, I will also give a brief overview about how other researchers try to solve this problem. So let's uh, st start this section with uh, a big picture. Uh, the main idea of our algorithm is to construct a certain dynamic, which mainly consists of two phases. They are the sampling and evaluation. In the sampling phase, we created a bunch of the tensor network structures following a given di distribution. And then in the evaluation phase, we calculate the value of the object function for all samples. And then we fed the evaluation result back to update the sampling distribution. And so we, we can see from th this structure that the searching dynamic is actually a kind of marker curve. It means that the sampling distribution in the current iteration is just determined by the result in the last iteration. So, and following this big picture, I will introduce three algorithms which has been studied in my research. Well, so in the first algorithm, we try to solve TNSS using the well-known genetic algorithm. The main idea is to represent the structural related parameters as a chromosomes within the framework of GA. To be specific, the structural related parameters are first represented with the adjusted matrix and the permutation matrix, as we have mentioned. And then the adjusted matrix is encoded with the entries from the upper triangular part, and the permutations are encoded with the so called random the random key trick. And then we concatenate them, the two codes together to form to be the chromosome in GA. Uh, uh, can, you, can you stop everything in the previous slides because there are too yeah. many things. I just have a yeah. clarification question. So here the chromosomes are basically a sequence of the ranks. In the tensor network. Uh, yes, in the in in the chromosome, maybe one part part. Can you see the points? Yes. See the points here. Okay, okay. So this line, this bar, corresponds to the whole chromosome. Maybe this part corresponds to the cycles of the ranks, as you have mentioned. Mm -hmm. This part comes from this part part which is a code to represent the whole adjusted matrix. And the green part corresponds to the codes for the permutations, which is encoded with the so-called random key trick. The random key trick is, it means that, that we use some random numbers drawn from the range between one and zero to represent the ordering information. For example, we have the value of 0 0.1, which is used to, to correspond to the 1, because this is the minimum value in the sequence. Mm -hmm. So the whole mm -hmm. chromosomes contain the rank and the topology information, this part, and uh, the permutation information, that, this part. So the whole part of encoding the tensor network and the topology is by this random key tree. And uh, no. Uh no, no. So, so sorry. Because the here the to, the tension image so the tension network to, to, topology means the graph. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the graph is represented by the adjacency matrix. Okay, I see. Thank you. So it means that this part, the all origin part, is used to re represent the network topology and the ranks. Mm -hmm. And the blue and the gray part is used to to encode the permutations. I see. Thanks. Okay, great. So, so may may I continue? Continue. Yeah. Uh, if no one else has question, yes. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, in the algorithm, we can we consider four types of genetic operators, each of which is designed heuristically. So I will not 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 to introduce too much details of, uh, about this part part. So in summary, there are several good properties for GI. Uh, so the first advantage is the genetic algorithm has the capability of achieving the global convergence. 
definitely with probability. And the GA is quite flexible to, to deal with the variety of the object function and very friendly with a parallel computation. Uh, I think these two properties are very important in the field of machine lear learning. But on the other side, hand, the GA all, also have many disadvantages. The genetic al al algorithm always requires a lot of samples in each generation, which is very resource consuming. And the theoretical analysis also lag because most of the genetic operators are designed heuristically. And the last drawback is that there are too many tuning parameters in the algorithm. So, and, and the performance of the genetic algorithm is quite sensitive to how you choose those tuning parameters. So to mitigate the drawbacks of the genetic algorithm, we propose a new one, which is called TNLS. The LS means the local sampling. The main idea of TNLS is to construct the steepest searching direction by random sampling in neighborhoods. The whole algorithm is very simple. First of all, we initialize the test network structure in random and construct its neighborhood. And then we randomly sample the candidates in the neighborhood and uh, evaluate the value of the observed function for all the samples. And after that, we update the center of the neighborhood with the samples who have the minimum value of the observed function. And the whole process will be done recursively until convergence. Note, note that there's no free lunch to improve the computational efficiency. So here we require an additional assumption that is the optimization landscape should be smooth. So on the theoretical side, first we show how to construct a neighborhood for the permutations. This construction is kind of non-trivial because we need to take the symmetries in TNSS into account. And I will talk, talk about more details of, about it in the theory section. And then we all also prove the conversion rate for the algorithms, seeing that if the random sampling is sufficient, and if and then we only consider finding the optimal ranks and topology. In this case, the algorithm can achieve a linear conversion rate, but up to a constant k. Uh, the k means the dimension of the third space. And then we also prove the elimination for TNLS. Uh, we find that algorithm actually suffers from the so-called curse of dimensionality. And it, it means that the number of the samples required in each uh, iteration would grow exponentially in the dimension of the third space k. I, I, I will introduce some more details in the theory part. So Guillaume, do you have any question? Yeah, yeah I do have a question. Can you go back yeah, to the yeah, previous please. slide? Previous slide, right? Yeah, I was just uh, curious. No, no. Yeah, it, this one, yeah. Because when we see, so it looks like the space is uh, continuous when you write it like that, but it's a discrete space, right? I just wanted to clarify, like the space of tensor network. Uh, yes. It's discrete, right? Like the structure and the ranks and everything. Yes. For example, th th this three pictures, maybe you can see, maybe, maybe you can, because this is an example, and this is a two-dimensional space, and one dimension is maybe the first rank, R1, mm -hmm. and the second direction is second rank, R2, and this is to show for the different ranks, they have the different uh, values for the update function, and this update function reflects how good the structure is. Okay, I see, I see, yeah. Perfect. So, but I was just, I wanted to make sure that I understood like, but yeah, the space is discrete, right? In terms of the structure yeah, 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 and the yeah. ranks and everything. Okay, perfect. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah, 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 sure. So, okay, let's move on to the next part. Next part. Well, 
So I hope you you do remember that the second al algorithm TLS suffers the curse of dimensionality. So in the three the third al al algorithm, we focus on solving the so called curse of dimensionality. And in the new algorithm, we call it TNALE. The ALE means the alternating local enumeration. We also need to construct a neighborhood as the algorithm in TNLS, but the main idea of the, the solution three is that uh, we replace the original inefficient random sampling in the neighborhood we, by, uh, by enumerating each parameter, for example, enumerating the two ranks in the example, uh, in the neighborhood alternately. It means that we first enumerate R1, and then we update R, R, R2 alternately. And then we also find that uh, the proposed algorithm has a strong connection uh, from the well-known TT cross decomposition, which is introduced by our citizen in 2010. And following their result, we can easily prove that uh, the new algorithm can indeed solve the curse of dimensionality. It means that uh, the new algorithm can reduce the required number of samples in each iteration from the exponential growth in the dimension of the third space K to a linear growth in the dimension of the third space K. But here, the, the re, uh, this reduction also occurs when the optimization landscape exhibits the low rank stru structure within the neighborhood. So next, let's see some numerical evidence. The first experiment aims to verify the low rank nature of the optimization landscape. For this purpose, Pur purpose, we generate the synthetic tensors randomly and focus on the classical rank selection within the tensor decomposition task. And the objective function is specified as shown in the slide, where we can see the compression ratio and the relative square er error. And in the experiment, we achieve the optimization lan landscape as a tensor of order four. And then we calculate the single, the averaged singular values of, of the landscape unfolded along the different directions for the for all synthetic ten, tensors. And from the left pa panel of the visualization, we can see it is quite apparent that only a few single values are significantly larger than zero. This observation indicates a highly pronounced low rank property within the optimization landscape. And on the right, right hand side, we the visualization of the landscape also highlights there are, you can find many recursing presence of the hues further contributing to the underlying low rank structure. And in the same experiment, we also verified the number of samples required to identify. Oh, okay, Jim, Jim, any quite, quite, quite Yeah, yeah, I have a quick, can you yeah. go back to the previous slide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I wanted to try, I, I'm not sure I understood the, so the first figure is the plot of the singular values of the target tensor for different matricization, right? Uh, it's not the full target ten, ten, tensor. This is, here we can, we, uh, how to say, because, he, um, uh, the ten ten tensor is uh, the landscape. I, it means that we construct the, this ten ten tensor. Each, each mode corresponds to the di 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 different structure related parameters, and the that is the interest of this ten tensor is the value of the objective function. Uh, I'm not sure you can understand. No, it. I think I see. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, you take for, so this. For example, this loss... if yeah, for example, if we see this 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 uh, for example, we have two per, per, per parameters, two ranks we need to learn to search mm -hmm. for. This is the rank one and the rank two, and that ten ten tensor correspond to this whole matrix. Mm -hmm. 
yes, I, the ma matrix contains R consists of the values of the operator function with the cor corresponding structures. Okay. Because I in see. the experiment, uh, there are four, uh, sorry, there are four uh, st structure related parameters. So we can have a tensor of order four. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we call it, it's a tensor of the land, of our optimization landscape. Okay. Yes, be, because in TNALE, we need a, an assumption that is this tense of landscape should be low rank. So in this experiment, we want to check if it is really low rank or not. Okay. And so this tensor is really just, okay, you put the objective function. So you select, a, so here, for example, you have a six order tensor, let's say, so then you have six ranks. And yeah. So then you yeah, build yeah, the yeah, six order tensor where you put the value yeah, of and the- Yeah, I unfold it, yeah. Okay, and this f of gr to control this tensor, you just estimate it using gradient descent or whatever, right? So you use an, yeah. because you don't know the actual minimum, but still you have you you optimize this function. This is what you put yeah. in this tensor. Okay, perfect. I yeah. got it. Thank you. Yeah. Well, so in the same experiment, we also ver verify the number of samples required to identify the one truth rex. So the result indicates that. The TNALE, the third solution, achieves the identification of the TN ranks with the fewest number of the samples. And for, 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 for the more examine the running, run, running time of the experiment, uh, also reveals that the solution three is the most efficient among the three methods. And the next experiment is for the permutation sub problem. Here, the experimental sightings are the same to the first experiment, but here we can see to search optimal per permutations for different types of the popular used tensor networks like tensor tree, paths, T, the theoretical tucker, and the Miller. And from the re results, we can find that the solution three the TNARE is the most efficient one among the three algorithms. So we can find uh, the consistent computational of the one uh, efficiency from the results. And the, the next experiment focuses on the topology search for representing the natural images. Just re recall the question posed at the beginning of the presentation. What is the most suitable tensor network model for our task? Interestingly, our experimental findings indicate that uh, the network topology discovered by our algorithms differ significantly from the ones proposed in the existing literature. This novel and the previous unknown topologies that, that, that demonstrate a substantially greater express power for tensor networks. So to summarize the three algorithm up, First, we can find that this, these algorithms are actually just the, the trade-off between the exploration and exploration. For example, the genetic algorithm like TNGA, the first algorithm, put much effort into the exploration. So it has more capability of achieving the global convergency, but the conversion rate would be relatively low. Sorry, the relatively slow. And on the other side, side, the algorithms like TNALE and TNLS, they are based on the local sampling. So it would converge to the local minimum, but have faster conversion rate. And the second point I'd like to highlight is that to accelerate the search efficiency for TNSS, it often requires additional structural priors to the optimization landscape, such as the smoothness or the low rankness. So next, let's see how other researchers solve the TNSS problem. So to make it uh, make it clear, I gave us three directions to represent the three subproblems in TNSS. So along the timeline, at the very beginning, I think the studies on tensor decomposition and tensor learning are mainly with the assumption that uh, the optimal structures are known, but it's that is definitely not true. At, at, at least you have to determine the ranks. 
So after that, many researchers began to become the study for the rank section problem. As for the topology search, I think the first work in the machine learning community should be the one by Hayashi in 2019, where they use the tensor networks to model the different uh, CNN layers. And our ma first method was, uh, uh, was also actually accomplished in 2019, but uh, just accepted in two, 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 2020. And after that, uh, the so study linking SS slightly changed the direction to search for the optimal to 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 topology and the ranks simultaneously. I think on this direction, I think I, I remember maybe it's in 2019 or 2020, Guillaume was invited by my supervisor Chibin and gave a talk in AIP. I'm not quite sure it's it's 2020 or 19. And I but but, but I re remembered in, in that talk he introduced the gradient based algorithm for the team SS. And that was my first time to realize that uh, the, the topology and the ranks can be optimized simultaneously. So I I claim that uh, on this point uh, the the GAMS, the gradient based method was the first one at, at least in the machine learning community. And uh, for the studies on TNPS, the permutation search, this topic is relatively new. A recently interesting progress is done by Chen and Andrew Zhang from Duke University. In their, in their work, work, they proved the identifiability for the permutation search. I think their research opened a new door for TNSS because the identifiability implies that solving TNSS can not only provide us a, not a more compact tensor network representation, but also the learned structure would reflect some interpretable meanings because of the uniqueness of the solution and the capability of identifiability. Well, so from the pers perspective of the techniques, I summarized the existing works in TNSS into four types. And uh, there's one point I'd like to highlight that uh, for the first two techniques, the main idea is to solve a surrogate problem instead of the original TNSS. They embed TNSS into some, somewhat some uh, continuous domain making the searching out optimization to be easier. And I compared the advantages and the disadvantages for each techniques in my own opin opinion. Maybe the com comparison is not fully cor correct to, due to my own taste, but I think we can still see something interesting. The first thing is that we can see there's no techniques outperforms are others. Different te 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 techniques have their own advantages and disadvantages. And uh, the spectral and the regularization methods are more computationally efficient, but they often choose the suboptimal solutions. So its precision is rel relatively low. And for the descriptive optimization, it is good at the precision and the flexibility, which I, I, I think which is uh, very important in machine learning problems, but uh, it is also bad at the computational efficiency and the theoretical guarantees. So the long-term goal in my research in TNSS is try to improve the computational efficiency and the theoretical understandings for the descriptive optimization methods in TNSS. So now you know how to solve it efficiently. So in the next section, I will talk about uh, some theoretical results involved in TNSS. The focus will mainly on the symmetry properties and its conversion analysis. So any questions about the algorithms? Uh, I have a question, a general yeah. question. I, yeah, I did not get it exactly that why the permutation search is important. Because I can understand that we need the topology, we need the rank. Yeah. But why the permutation search is important? Because uh, uh, I think one, yeah, I think uh, uh, for example, we can, uh, re for example, we in, in, in my side, assume that we have a 
a tensor of all the, all, the, all, the, all the four, right? We have tensor of all order four, and we'd like to decompose it by, with a ten, tensor ring. So we in, in this case, we need to determine how to map the four mode indexes onto the vertices of the graph because such a such relation is not unique. And the one fact is with some uh for with different uh, ma mappings from the mode indexes onto the vertices, with the same ranks, they the tensor decomposition can provide us with a different approximation error. It, it means that there exists a bad, better, better uh, mapping from mode indexes onto the vertex, which can be used to represent the data with lower approximation error or with using fewer number of parameters. That is why we need to search for the optimal permutation. Okay, basically, if the if the output is a matrix, a distance matrix of the graph, we we want to give all the permutations of this that represents the graph. Oh, so, so sorry, maybe I'm not quite. quite yeah, I, I'm not sure. I will think more about it. Thank you. No, I, uh, I think I, if I can jump in, I, I, because I think like the the. <clears throat> The permutation can be seen as a special case of the tensor network structure search because, as you were showing, like uh, given an adjacency matrix, the permutation would just be applying a permutation to the rows and columns of this adjacency matrix. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. in the end, yeah. is that if you think about the tensor network structure search as just finding the adjacency matrix, then you don't have to think about the permutation. It's kind of like like yeah. searching for the adjacency matrix, the best yeah. one. Encompasses the tensor network structure uh, permutation. So yeah, it's kind of a subcase. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right. Thanks. Okay, so let, let, let's start the next part. Is a theoretical re re results. Well, so first of all, I'd like to introduce you some studies about the uh, symmetries. So two studies, the uh, symmetry in team SS, let's revisit the permutation third sub-problem. I hope you still remember that uh, uh, we have had a tensor ring of order four, but here we, we'd like to search for the optimal vertex per permutations. And we, we, we found that in the algorithm, if we switch the position of the mode indexes X, Y, Z, and T as the permutation P, then we definitely have a new tensor network. But if we check the two tensor networks carefully, we can find that the two tensor net networks are actually identical to each other. And with more mathematical words, it means that uh, when we solve the, the problem of TNPS by optimizing the permutation P here, then there exists a non-trivial permutation such that if we act this permutation on the graph G0, G zero the zero will be not changed because this phenomenon as the, the symmetry property in TNPS, in TNSS. And uh, we also know that it is all, also happens universally for most of the well-known testing net networks. And if we think, think about the reason, it is no hard to know that it is because the tensor network topology is invariant under some permutations. For, for, for example, in this example, the tensoring network is invariant under rotation and flipping. I think it is a very good property because it can allow us to construct more compact to search space in the algorithm. But uh, to leverage this property, we are we need to we need a quantitative analysis tool for the, this property, and we all, we all, we, all, we also need to redefine the geometry for the search space if we take the symmetry into account. It is because the symmetry property would lead to the irregular search, search space. So in my re research, I think the group theory might be the most natural framework to deal with the symmetry in TNSS. So to do this, we consider the isomorphisms as, as a feedback set where the graph G0 
correspond to the fixed network topology, like the tensor ring in the, exam, then, then in the example. The intuition is this set contains all the tensor network structures with the same topology as G0, but the different vertex permutations. So uh, using this set, we can reformulate the optimization problem for TNPS as equations uh, as three by ch changing the optimization on the permutation with the optimization on the graph directly. And according to the Lagrange theorem in group theory, we can e easily calculate quantitative, quantitatively how much the third space can be compressed uh, because of the symmetry property. And we, we can see that the compression ratio is actually controlled by the so-called automorphisms of the test network topology G0. And the size of the automorphism to reflect how symmetric of the net, ten, tensor net, network is. For the most well-known tensor net, networks, we can know the exact values of the size of, of the automorphisms. And we can use this values to know how the third space is com compressed ex exactly. But there still remains an open problem that how to know it for arbitrary tensor network topology. So to tackle this problem, we prove that the size of the automorphisms for arbitrary tensor networks can be bound bounded by the maximum graph degree. In the context of the tensor networks, the graph degree reflects the tensor orders of the vertexes in the tensor network. And, and based on the lemma, the continuous theorem shows that how the symmetry property affects the size of the, for the whole third space in TNSS. And then after that, the symmetry also affects the geometry of the third space. It is because since, since our algorithms are required to construct a neighborhood, so we have to redefine the distance between the tensor network structures if we take the symmetries into account. Our idea is to find the distance of to the two st structures by minimizing the root metric between their corresponding permutations based on the multiplication of all possible automorphisms. And we prove that the function seven satisfies the definition as a, a semi-metric of the third, third space. And the lemma also gave us how to construct the neighborhoods induced by the, this new metric. And from the, the lemma, we can see that the construction of, of, of the neighborhood requires the information of the automorphisms. But uh, from the graph, Theory, we know that enumerating all possible permutations from the automorphisms is actually computational difficult. So, in our algorithm, we solve these problems by just omitting the 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 the, the, the cues or automorphism directly, based on the fact that the most graphs are non-symmetric. This it is a a little bit of uh. How, how to say, counterintuitive. In, the meaning of the sentence, most graphs are not symmetric. It means that if we generate a graph in random, then this graph will be non-symmetric with high probability with increasing the number of the vertexes. And in the experiments we found when we use this, this, this trick, it will not affect the search efficiency too much. So after the symmetry property, let, let, next let's see how to analyze the searching dy dy dynamic for our algorithms. Here I focus on the two algorithms, TNRS and TNRE, because the, the both two algorithms are based on the local sampling. But there are, uh, and in this part, I'm interested in two open problems. The first pro pro problem is the conversion for the two algorithms is unknown, but and difficult to analyze due to the discrepancy nature of the ta task. 
And the second problem is that it, it is also unknown that how the, how the different sampling strategies affect the certain efficiency. So to, to solve this, this, these two problems, my idea is that we can see, consider the local sampling as an estimation of the gradient in the discrete domain. So it means that uh, uh, we have had gradient, uh, gradient information. Why, why not we try to analyze a certain di dynamic with the most classic framework of the conver convex analysis? So in the rest of this section, I will tell you how to do the con convex analysis for the TNSS algorithms, but in the discrete domain. So to do so, we first uh, first simplify the formula for TNSS, where we use the X to den denote the tensor net 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 network ranks and they use the linear operator P to model the topology and the permutations. And finally, we use the F to represent the whole operator function. Since, since the linear operator will not affect the convexity of the of function, so the operator P can be absorbed into the function F, F for fur further sim simplifying the formula. And it is no, no, no hard to know that this new formulation is reasonable because any tensor network structures can be represented by the form of Px. And so to establish the framework, our first step is to construct the finite gradient in the discrete domain. Uh, in place of, of the gradients in the continuous do, do, in the continuous domain. So with this new finite gradient, our idea is to redefine the, the strong convexity and the smoothness for the ablative function. So following this idea, we first redefine the alpha strong convexity with a finite gradient in the discrete domain. If you are familiar with the conventional convex analysis, you can find there's no big differences difference apart from an additional term. And we can prove several properties for it, which is useful in the proof of the conventional rate. And similarly, we can also redefine the smoothness for the function in the discrete dom domain with the finite gradient. Here, we should, we should notice that in the new definition, we not only need to control the changing rate of the gradient as in the definition for the smoothness in the continuous domain, but also we need to control the value of the function which is not required in the original definition. And then like the convexity, we all also have the four, four following two lemmas. So based on the new defined convexity and the smooth smoothness, we can de 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 derive some new properties for the functions who satisfy these assumptions. The first property uh, is about the convex combination. I, I think the inequality for the convex com combination might be the most important uh, property in the convex, uh, convex analysis. Unlike the continuous domain, there are two points we should to note. Uh, the first is that we can see there's additional terms appeared for the discrete domain because we use the finite gradient. And the second point we need to notice is that for any x and y because x y are cho cho chosen from the integer vectors its convex combination q would be not integer vectors anymore so here we, we are required to to impose on, on, on another approximation to solve this problem and the second property is for the sub-level set, 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 set. Uh, we can prove that uh, if the function is uh, strongly convex and smoothness, so for any point in this in the fitable set, there always exists a sublevel cube who, uh, whose one corner would be x, and uh, this cube would be a subset of the sublevel set of the function. Maybe, maybe this. Uh, I, I, 
the into Asia is not suitable for forward. So let's see one example. Uh, suppose we consider the case of, of the one dimension. And so, so suppose we have uh, uh, an object fun function f, f. Then the strong convexity and the smoothness will control the shape of the f, making it not too flat and not too sharp. And then for any give, give, given point xt, we definitely have a cor corresponding fxt. Then the sub-level set means the area under the orange line. And the uh, lemma for the sub-level cube means that uh, it, it, it means that there exists a cube in the third space, which is a segment in the one dimension. And the one end should be the xt. And then if we draw any sim samples in this cube, we can always decrease the value of the object, uh, objective function. That, that is the intuition for the lemma of the sublevel cube. And this is also the intuition why we can use the local sampling to find the optimal solution in TNSS. And based on this intuition, we can easily prove the conversion rate for the local sampling sample algorithms. And we prove the algorithm can achieve the conversion rate, uh, the li linear conversion rate up to a constant related to the dimension of the third space K, as we have mentioned. And uh, this additional term appears because of we, we use the finite grid graded in the proof. And we can also see when we try to prove the conversion guarantees, uh, this additional term makes that uh, the, 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 the mix that there exists a cons consistent bias on the right hand side of the equ e equation five. And following this framework, we can also easily prove the curse of dimensionality the curse of dimensionality in TNLS. Uh, re re recall that uh, the blue area denotes the sublevel cube to guarantee the decreasing of the function. And uh, we, I, I hope you still remember that in TNLS, we need to uniformly randomly draw samples in the neighborhood of the fx, which corresponds to the red, the, the, the red area. Then we can see that one half of the red area is overlapped with the blue area. It means that we can decrease the value of the opposite function f by random sampling only when we draw the samples in the overlapped area. And in the case of one dimension, we can see the ratio of the overlapped area is just, just one half. And if we consider higher dimensions from one dimension to the two dimension, the ratio of, of the overlap area gets smaller to be one fourth. And we, if we consider the three dimension, the value will get smaller, much smaller to, to be one eighth. So we can see that the ratio of the overlap area gets smaller exponentially with increasing of the, uh, the dimension in the third of the third space. So it means that if we consider the uniformly random sampling in the neighborhood, the probability of drawing us one sample in the overlapped air, air area will also get smaller exponentially with increasing the dimension of the third space. That is the intuition why the TNLS suffers from the curse of dimensionality. Okay, I think maybe this part is, is not so clearly explained. So any questions, I can explain it again. <laughs> I have a so, question, just yeah, yeah, rapidly. Please. Sorry. Right. Mm. If you go back to the previous slide where you had all the theorems, I just, I didn't have the, I want to see the last one. Yeah. So this tells that 
in the limit when n goes to infinity. So this is like an xn is your series of solution that has been found by the by the optimization, the structure search algorithm. Yeah. And you achieve that you converge to the optimal, the cost of the optimal solution, but they say that this is a constant, right? So what what does it does it tell us something? Because we would expect this thing to converge to zero, no? If we were to actually converge towards the optimal solution. Uh, yeah, I, I think in pri practice, we can find that the algorithm can all, always can converge to zero. We can, yeah. because, yeah, in the neighborhood, as, as, as long as we have sufficient large amount of sen sen samples close to op op optimal, we can always get, get the optimal solution. But in the yeah. proof, yes, there exists a a con constant best here. It mean, means that uh, this value is not larger than some con 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 constant. Maybe. It also means that you don't converge to zero, right? Like in terms of uh, yeah, no, 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 mm. no, not converge to the zero in the yeah. proof. I remember for the greedy algorithm, I tried to show convergence to a solution because intuitively, if you start adding ranks, right, adding capacity, you should find. A model that is not necessarily the best, like a tensor network that is not the best, but at least achieves zero error. But yeah. this is quite tricky. This is quite tricky, even though it's very intuitive, as you were describing, like in practice. But um, but yeah, to find a formal argument is very difficult. Anyway, yeah, th thank you. This is only more common than a question, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is the intuition. And yeah, this is the end. This is the concluding remark. Yes, here I prepare three takeaway messages for my presentation. The first me message is, I, I want to say that the tensor network structures can be used to boost the per performance for the tensor net networks in machine lear learning. And the tensor network structure search can be solved by the genetic algorithm, stochastic search, and alternative enumeration. And the last message is that uh, the tensor uh, asset algorithm can explore unknown but more efficient tensor network models than the ones proposed in the existing literature. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the great talk. Thank you, Tom. And thank you. And thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, Thanks. Have a have a nice evening. No, are there any questions? Maybe if there are questions, we can uh, even though we're on the top of the hour. But um, I had a quick question. If there is not yeah, yeah. another one, I already asked a lot of questions. But <laughs> uh, you mentioned that your your next objective is to get a method that is both computationally efficient and benefits from some theoretical guarantees. Right? Yeah. 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 What are do do you have already ideas that you are exploring in this direction? That that how to tackle that? Oh, uh, I think uh, that that yes, yes. Thank you very much for the question. Yeah, you 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 said there's two points. One is to improve the computational efficiency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the first point, one of my few 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 future work is also my ongoing work, is to consider to borrowed idea of the uh, neural tangent kernel from the NAS in, into this problem. Because uh, if we can cal calculate the NTK, we can have a training free, we can have a decomposition free algorithm for search for the algorithm. I think this, this will be a good idea to decrease, uh, to improve the computational effect efficiency in TNSS significantly. This is one of my ongoing work. And the second, second idea I, I'd like to share with, with you is because all the algorithms are designed are actually heuristically because this problem is very, very difficult. It has to be, it has been proven to be MP difficult. So all the algorithms are actually heuristic. So why not we, uh, we you you use some tool which can help help us design the certain that di di dynamic out, 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 automatically. For example, we consider the large language models help us to update the sampling for the next gen generation. I have done some uh some toy experiments on this point. I found 
it is very interesting. It's maybe so far it's too difficult to achieve the state of the art performance, but sometimes times the large language model like ChatGPT can guide us to very interesting searching direction. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe yes. I I have had a name for this algorithm called TNGPT, something like, <laughs> like that. But uh, I think it's still far away from the pub public but I think it deserves to, to be tried be yeah, be because I also find some work works from, from Google, uh, Google, 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 they consider the, to use the ten, large language model to be the optimizer. Mm -hmm. So why, why not we use yeah. GPT for the optimization in, in the Tencent network structure search? Yeah. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Uh, I have a I have a final question as well. Uh, do you have any idea about reinforcement learning uh, methods and graphs? Because there are some some yeah. learning methods and graphs that they search structures and subgraphs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I think there has been one work published in ICASP maybe in two thousand eighteen. Yeah, some some Ch Chinese researchers use reinforcement learning to search for the optimal tensor network ranks, tensor ring rank. Ranks, yes. I I think it is makes sense. It, it makes sense. But the problem is how to prepare the meaningful data data set for training. Yeah, because if uh, I think that would be one problem we need to consider. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. to, do you yeah, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say hello to uh, yeah, yeah, Yong yeah, and yeah. Nice, hello, nice yeah, to see you. you. Yes, yeah, thank you for inviti uh, inviting Cho to give a talk in your group. Yeah, no, thank you. This was really great. This was an interesting talk. An interesting line of research. Yeah, yeah. I think he prepared a presentation very well and present a series of his work in past few years. Yeah, well, that's very interesting. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for your great uh, comment, comments and questions. I yeah, think sure. to understand. Yeah, thank you for Actually, the talk. Actually, we also want to know what, what's the future direction. <laughs> and, uh, we um, want to know your opinion. On, on the future direction, so we've been working on a lot of different things. But one thing that we've been working on uh, with Fazane, notably, is about uh, explainability in, uh, in graph neural network with tensor networks. <laughs> So it's more related a little bit to uh, Nadav Cohen's work, like with the separation, right? So there is something like that. We're trying to use uh, tensor network methods for explainability is one of the projects that we have currently. Yeah. And, yeah. and the connection with quantum computing also a little bit. We are starting to look into quantum machine learning and these kind of things, how tensor networks can be useful here. Yeah, exactly. We are I have same similar situation. I think <laughs> Chow is very interesting in quantum machine learning. Uh, yeah, we could chat at some point and uh, yeah, and when <laughs> I visit next uh, next fall. <laughs> anyway, thanks again, Chow, for the presentation. Yeah. yeah and and by the way, are you going new leaps this year? Um, I will stop the recording.